Bill Shankly wasn't being entirely serious when he said football was more important than life and death, but some players seem to believe it, judging by how they treat the laws of the game. Here are some of the dirtiest players ever. Gennaro Gattuso Gennaro Gattuso's nickname during his playing days was Ringio, the growl. The tough-tackling midfielder played alongside Andrea Perlo in AC Milan's midfield. Perlo brought the silk and Gattuso brought the steel. Gattuso often lost his temper on the pitch. In a game against Ajax in 2003, he delivered a backhanded slap to the face of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But it wasn't just opposition players who had to face Gattuso's wrath. The Italian once pushed Tottenham assistant manager Joe Jordan in the throat during a game and then headbutted him after the final whistle. Diego Costa If a non-football fan watched Diego Costa for the first time, they'd probably think there was a sniper in the stadium. Even with the lightest of touches, Costa goes down like he's been shot. The former Atletico Madrid striker is a pantomime villain. Sometimes it seems as if he prefers conning referees to scoring goals. He's no stranger to violent conduct either. While playing for Chelsea, he gouged Laurent Koscielny's eye stamped on Liverpool's Martin Skirtle and Emery Cham, and threw Sergei Aurier to the ground in a so-called friendly. We're not sure Costa knows the meaning of the word. Nigel de Jong Every young kid dreams of playing in the World Cup final, but only a lucky few get to achieve that ambition. Nigel de Jong is one of them, but his appearance in the 2010 final is remembered for something he'd rather forget – a horrific karate kick to Xabi Alonso's chest. The amazing thing is, he got away with a yellow card. De Jong was always known as a tough tackler. Sometimes he won the ball cleanly, but he often crossed the line. Just look at this awful assault on Donington Nagby's ankle during his days with LA Galaxy. French newspaper L'Equipe once named him the most violent player in the world. De Jong was probably quite proud of that. John Terry John Terry was no stranger to sneaky shirt pulls or tackles from behind, but the dirtiest thing he ever did happened off the pitch. In 2010, it was claimed that Terry had had an affair with the ex-girlfriend of former Chelsea teammate Wayne Bridge. Terry tried to keep the story out of the papers but his plans failed after the courts overturned an injunction. When Terry and Bridge played against each other a month later, Bridge refused to shake his former teammate's hand. Nothing surprises me about John Terry, Man City striker Craig Bellamy said after the game. I think everyone in football knows what the guy's like. England manager Fabio Capello stripped Terry of the captaincy after the incident. The defender was criticised for breaking the moral code of the dressing room, but his career wasn't really harmed. He's had to put up with predictable jokes about him stealing other people's girlfriends ever since, though. Jamie Vardy Jamie Vardy isn't a dirty player in the traditional sense. He doesn't commit that many fouls, and he's been shown fewer than 25 yellow cards in his Premier League career. But the Leicester striker absolutely loves to wind up opponents, and that includes fans as well as players. As well as provoking defenders to try to get a reaction, Vardy regularly celebrates his goals in front of rival team supporters. The louder they boo him, the more he loves it. Vardy's also been seen throwing punches on the pitch, although not at opponents. After missing a chance against Sevilla, uh, the frustrated striker punched himself in the face. Hmm. Pepe the players who dive the most are usually attackers. That's because they're the main victims of fouling and they often have the chance to win penalties for their team. There are exceptions, though. Now, take Pepe. He dives so often that it's hard to believe he's a centre-back. Real Madrid matches weren't complete until the Portuguese had thrown himself to the ground a few times. He seems to spend more of his time acting than actually playing football. Pepe's also more than capable of a horror tackle or 10. He's also hot-headed. The defender was sent off at the 2000 and 14 World Cup for needlessly headbutting Thomas Muller. Luis Suarez uh, Luis Suarez has a big appetite for foul play. He's sunk his teeth into it from the start of his career. Uh, now, before you judge the Barcelona striker, ask yourself this. Can you honestly say you've never bitten someone while performing your job? Uh, yeah, fair enough. Incredibly, Suarez has treated three opponents as if they were his lunch, biting Otman Bakal in 2010, Branislav Ivanovic in 2013, and Giorgio Cellini at the 2014 World Cup. It was his own version of a three-course meal. Suarez is also a serial diver. He regularly pretends he's injured when he's not. You could say the Uruguayan likes to make a meal of 
things. While playing for Liverpool against Norwich, Suarez went down as if he'd been shot before bouncing back to his feet when the ball came his way. I think we can safely say he's unlikely to ever win the FIFA Fair Play Award. Zinedine Zidane Zinedine Zidane was an amazing player, but his most famous moment on a football pitch isn't a goal, a pass or a piece of skill. It's a headbutt on Italy defendo Marco Materazzi in the 2006 World Cup final. Materazzi reportedly insulted Zidane's family and Zizou couldn't contain his anger. Now, Zidane was always going to retire after the World Cup in Germany. That means his final act on a football field was to plant his head into Materazzi's chest. Zidane had to walk past the Jules Rimet trophy and watch from the dressing room as Italy won on penalties. That wasn't the only time Zidane lost his cool. He was also sent off during the 1998 World Cup for stamping on a Saudi Arabian player. And back in his Bordeaux days, Zidane got a red card for punching Marcel Desailly. Joey Barton Right from the very start of his career, Joey Barton was known as a dirty player. One of his first misdemeanours came when he stubbed out a lit cigar in the eye of a Man City youth team player. It was at a Christmas party when everyone was supposed to be enjoying themselves. Barton's career, though, was littered with controversies. He spent two and a half months in prison after being found guilty of assault. He was also found guilty of committing assault, occasioning actual bodily harm, on Man City teammate Usman Darbo. Barton's craziest moment on the field, though, came during his time at QPR. In a vital game against Man City, he was sent off for elbowing Carlos Tevez. Barton then went on the rampage after being shown the red card. He kicked Sergio Aguero, tried to headbutt Vincent Company, and then squared up to Mario Balotelli. Ah, Roy Keane. Roy Keane is one of football's biggest hard men. He never shied away from a physical battle during his time at Manchester United. Keane's long-running feud with Patrick Vieira was legendary. The two midfielders were involved in several scraps during their careers, and Keane never backed down, despite being much smaller than the Arsenal man. The United captain also had run-ins with Alan Shearer, Jason McAteer and Jan Fjortoft. He was once sent off for stamping on Gareth Southgate's chest, with Keane later saying it was the only time he crossed the line on a football pitch. Now, Alfinger Haaland, the father of Erling Haaland, might disagree with that. Haaland was the victim of a terrible tackle by Keane in 2001. This was a premeditated attack from the Irishman. He wanted to get revenge on Haaland because, four years earlier, the Norwegian had accused Keane of faking injury after he tore his cruciate ligament. Ladies and gentlemen, never get on the wrong side of Roy Keane. Who would you put on the dirty players list? Let us know in the comments section below and subscribe for more great football content.